we're going to do a couple different drills. These are things that I would recommend doing in your driveway to start out. That's kind of why I like this. Who gave me, who busted my balls a little bit about, he said something about yesterday, he says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call you out on it. Yesterday you wanted us to do heel work and you had us on grass. Because he's heard me talk about, oh, you don't do heel work on grass to start out. That's a lot of distractions. There's tons of scent there. There's so much for that dog to want to work, 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 and get in the way of connecting with me. Heel work is where I really connect with the dog. I really get them. So, what we're going to do is a couple things. We're going to start out with what I, what I call 180 turns. They're just 180 degree turns. Now, what I like about down here is it's concrete, less distractions. We've got saw cut joints. We're going to do a square cut, a square drill where we're going to actually walk in squares. So that's where I said we're going to have to move some stuff at some point. So we'll move that table back. We'll move a few things once we space out. But I'm just going to show you to start out with what, I'm, what we're looking for. Now, again, Fee is not my dog. So I've had her for, I had her for three or four days this week for the DVD. And I used her a little bit. And so Chris, heel work with her. How has it been for you? Not, not terrible. She likes to stay at that half step ahead. So anybody got a dog that likes to stay a little bit ahead? Put your hands up a little bit more. It's the majority. Okay? I see it occasionally where dogs want to stay a half step back. Or more than that, I've got one that's like that, Taylor. <laughs> Taylor's really like that. So I, she wants to say four steps back. So that's the opposite. But typically, it's they want to be ahead. They want to be ahead. They want to be ahead. Well, let me tell you, leaders, leaders lead. Leaders go first. That's a sign right then and there. They're telling you that they're the leader. So I don't. That for that reason alone, I don't allow it. But when we get into heel work, if my dogs get ahead of me. How I fix that oftentimes is I change directions. I turn. So the first thing we're going to do is they're 180 degree turns. So when we do this, we're going to break it up and see because we I didn't plan it. We plan on doing it out there where we had a ton of space and we could get to our groups and but and we could use nice straight mowing lines and all that stuff. Now we've got lines and we've got concrete and we're going to make it work. But we're probably iPads. We didn't grab iPads. We need iPads. Um, can you go grab the iPads that are on the tables? Because we're going to put iPads in the group and people are going to film the other people. This is where we help that girl out by showing her she turned around the dog. So 180s is what we're going to start out with. So see, we're always going to start, we talked a little, I touched on it a little bit yesterday. When, when you got an athlete, when you're in an athletic stance, you can move, right? Like if I'm playing defense against someone, I'm like this, if I'm ready to face, if I'm a wrestler, whatever it is, there's a big difference between this and this. I need to be like this if I'm gonna do something. If my dog is gonna do something, I need them to be in an athletic or ready stance. Now I also have to measure it, because I don't want them so ready to go that, they, that I lose them. So there I have to find balance with that. But, Laying down is a sign to me that the dog understands they're going to be here a while. I might as well get comfortable. I love that. But I can't go from comfortable laying down to heel because there's too many things that have to take place in order for this to happen smooth. So when, if your dog, if you get to the point where your dog is laying down, like a lot of these are, they've realized I'm in for a wait. Now there's some dogs here that are showing me some nice patience and there's some showing me that they're just not ready to be patient right now. They'd like to get going. So that's fine. That's stuff that I put in the back of my mind and I go, these are things that we need to work on. Now Jim talk, told me yesterday, you know, I just I struggle with the focus being extended sometimes. I can get her to listen for two, three minutes, but then it, it fades away pretty quick. But he also said, which I think Jim has a lot of self-awareness of his things that are going on with the dog, because he also said, you know, that's usually when I quit paying attention to it. So as soon as he's got the dog settled and then he gets comfortable and he decides, you know, other things are going to go on, Lily goes, eh, he's not with me, I think I'll do my own thing too. So 
sometimes this is going to be just backing up and some of the training is going to be this. The dogs are always learning. We're always training. This is training. I'm going to talk about heel work and we're going to do heel work, but we're still training. We're training each one of these dogs to wait patiently. Look at this one. He's ready to take a nap. I love it. So for, if we're struggling with that, some of our training sessions are going to be, we're going to work on something, but the majority of the training is actually going to be just us hanging out and waiting in between things we do. You'll get plenty of that over the next day and a half. So in order for me to get the dog in a position to do something, I got to get her attention. I need her, I'm going to start every command with her name. I'm going to precede it because out in the field, I'm going to start picking on dogs one at a time. Taylor, Ellie, Spry, you're going to do this, you're going to do that, you're going to do this. I'm going to start off with their name so that they know I'm talking to them. Because if I say, get back, I might have three dogs get back. But if I say, Taylor, get back. Taylor's going to go, Ellie shouldn't. I precede the command with the name. So when I start heel work, Fee, did you see her head come up? She heard me. She showed me that she heard me. That's when I follow it up with the command. If you say the dog's name and you don't get anything out of it, you say it again until you get something. Now, I'm not big on, I like one command dogs. When I say sit, that means you sit. So you control the behavior. You don't go sit, 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 and then they finally sit because they're picking and choosing when they listen. You say sit, and if they don't sit, we correct. And now we get a sit out of it. Now, when I say fee, that was it. She heard me. Sometimes it's going to be, especially with my older dogs, I might say, Taylor. And the ear goes like this. Just switch it. That's me being able to read her and say, I got her. Go. But if, I, if she's over here and I say, Taylor, and she continues to go over here, I might say, Taylor. Change my tone slightly and all of a sudden she goes, her ta ear goes, okay. I know she's tuned to me. So this heel work is going to connect us to our dogs. So, fee, heel. I said fee, heel. So, now fee wants to go a half step ahead, according to Chris. So, my feeling is this. My dog will not dictate our pace. I will, so when I got dogs that want to work fast, I work real slow. This is slow. And this is really not bad at all. Now as I get closer to people, now did you see her natural little bend with me? We're not touching. Now the other thing to pay attention is the leads. I saw a lot of this yesterday. A lot of steering wheels. I call these steering wheels. We steer the dog to turn. Well here's the thing. The, the slips that we have on, we're going to talk about the slips. Who's got a slip handy that I can put on my wrist? This is a good big bold one to see. Sit. Someone asked me, could you show that again? Because it was hard to see from the line. Sit. There's a, there's a right way and a wrong way to put it on. So the point of it, the objective of it, is to put a correction on when the dog gets out of position. And when the dog is in position, I turn the pressure off instantly. That's going to allow for our dogs to understand right or wrong. On, off, on, off, on, off. If you heel on the left hand side, you need to put it so that the tail of this is towards you. If you've got it, the tail on the outside, it pinches. So it's, this is, my dog's on the left hand side. So here it is, it's loose. And when I correct it, it pinches, but then I release it and it drops. Now if, a lot of times this gets wrapped around the collar, you see me adjust it a lot. It gets swung around to the opposite side, so I reach in and I slide it over. Adela did it several times yesterday. She adjusted it on Hutch because when it's over here on the other side, it's on correctly, but in order for me to get bite, I got to get it all the way around. It doesn't work. So it's got to be tail to you. Now if you're on the opposite side, it should be tail to you this way. So when you correct, you're able to turn it off. So I'm going to be, everybody be conscious of how you're putting your slips on. So, Wyatt, thank you. Now, the reason is there's a little rhythm to this. This slip chain right here is a little bit 
Uh, it's just about right. I don't want a big tail hung off of it. We're going to find out if people have the right size chains because if it's too long, you don't get enough on it. Like, there's correction. There's release. There's a sound to it. Jeff said something yesterday when I took Thor. When you gave him two or three corrections, it was just there was something different about the way it sounded. It was zip, 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 zip. If it goes zip, zip, it's right. If it goes zip, zip, it's missed. It's too, you, I did it with that dog upstairs. On off, on off, on off. And it responded pretty well. It's responding really nice now. So if she gets out too far, I correct and I turn the opposite way. Fee, heel. Now if I want to go at her pace, she'll likely catch up with me. Loose lead is what I'm looking for, a J. The lead to the chain is a J. If you're like this, you're not allowing the dog to get the full impact of correction and then off. If you're like this all the time, you're like at a six, let's say it's a scale of one to 10. One, no, one is little, little, no pressure. 10 is the pressure it takes in order to get it changed. That's what we're looking for, the amount of pressure it takes to get a change. So that's variable. But one to 10, I like being at one, 10 gets me a change. So if I've got it like this, heel, it's not as tight as it would be as I correct, but if I'm like this, heel, and she gets out of position and I gotta correct, in order for me to get to 10, because I'm starting at six, there's a middle pressure on it. It needs to be no pressure. So that when I put it on, I get to 10, and then I go back to zero. If I start at six, in order for me to get a change, I gotta go 10 notches. Now I need to go to 16. And then I gotta go back down to six. The dog becomes numb to that pressure. I want zero pressure on heel. Because ultimately, I want zero leads. I want loose leads, then I want no leads. So she hasn't given me a chance to correct her yet. So I'm gonna speed up. Boy, she hooks right to me. So she's real good on a right hand turn. Is Fry down here? Let me switch. Uh, let me go to left hand turn. She's real good on a right hand turn. I'm going to go to a left hand turn because this is where I caught her before. So I want you guys walking straight lines, heel. And when the second they get out of position, it's correct and turn. And notice one thing about this dog is her eyes. You know how she hooks into me? Because she's watching me. I'm really looking for dogs to give me their eyes. When I got their eyes, I got them. She's looking at me and going, what do you want me to do? I'll do whatever you want me to do. There's 10 other dogs here right now, and she is looking at me. I'm her leader. Now, let's see what her left hand turn looks like. Not too bad. I really want it to be Chris. A lot of times when we go left hand turn, she gets caught way out of position. Now, we've worked on this over the last three days because when I first did this, I did it on live, Facebook, and I turned, and she's used to coming this way in this habit. So she's used to, remember, in a race, a race car, if you're on the outside track, you've got to go faster to keep up with the guy on the inside lane. So she got in the habit, I'd turn to the right, she'd speed up, she'd speed up, she'd speed up, she'd speed up. She caught it, we really got good at it, she went, I got it, I got it, I got it. So I say, you got it, let's change it. Balance. You're really good at right hand turns. How are you on left hand turns? And I turn like this and she went like this. So when you get, when you get off with your rhythm, you and your turn, you bump into each other. What, 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 feet are off, what, what, what. So now what I want to do is go left hand turn. And what I had to do was I had to take the lead. Now you'll notice the lead is loose. The lead's been loose the whole time. But I started tapping her. Tapping her, tapping her, tapping her, tapping her. Ah, 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 ah. Little correct. Tap, 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 tap. Tap, 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 tap. Good, very good. And all of a sudden, I got her to understand that's awkward to go that way for her. It's very natural for her to lead with her front shoulders. When you walk somewhere and you're a four-legged dog. You lead with your head. You lead with your front shoulders. Now I'm asking you to do something completely different. Where's Ellie? Watch Ellie's feet. This is a lot harder. 
You? Now, notice the eyes. Again, I got good eyes. You? Now watch my left hand. I'll start out right hand turn with this. Notice the lead, loose lead. Ooh, I could have caught her there. I missed it. My timing was poor. She's feeling me. Ah, 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 give her a night there. Now, watch the left hand turn. Watch her body, what her back end does. Not real, not real clean. Five hops to get to there. We can get better. There. That's a lot better. Heel. Missed it. She went past me. She wasn't paying attention. Two, three hops. Now, what part of her body is leading? Her butt. She's leading with it. Watch her butt. Watch her bend. Her body hat, in order for her to get where I want to get her, let's say this is her body. Let's see. In, when I turn left, here's her butt and here's her head. Her butt has to bend this way and her front shoulders have to follow it. Now when I turn, I turn. And then I turn. 180. This is why we're going to use the concrete lines. Watch my turns. I've seen this is where that gal would walk around her dog. Notice how she's really reading me. And she's adjusting to me. Now the gal that I was talking about before went like this. And the dog walked a straight line. And she would walk around it. So I moved a foot. And if you don't pay attention to that, you go, I am walking a straight line. I am walking a straight line. iPad says you're not. So that's why we're going to film it. So we're going to go 180s. When they get out of position, we correct an opposite. Correct, opposite. Correct. Come on, come on, come on. She's slow. Get it up to you. Come on. It's about tone. Come on. Come on. Come on. Then, once we have that, we're going to work on getting... This is going to start our connection and our feel and our rhythms together. Then we're going to switch it to, left, to squares. I've got a square here. Concrete square. Right hand turn first. Ellie, heel. I'm going to come to the corner. I'm going to turn. Then I'm going to come to the corner. And I'm going to turn. I'm going to come to the corner. Here's a distraction. I'm going to turn. Come to the corner and turn. The thing that's nice about this is you can't miss your corners. You don't step off. You straddle the lion. The dog comes with you. So then we're going to walk corners. And by doing 180s, and then squares, you're going to see an incredible change with the ability for your dog to connect to you. Mm -hmm.